Welcome to the Lean Blog Podcast. Visit our website at www.leanblog.org. Now, here's your host, Mark Graben. Well, I want to welcome our good friend, Norman Bodek. Uh, join us here again on the Lean Blog Podcast. It's good to see you again, Norman. Thank you, Mark. It's always a pleasure. Thanks. So we're going to talk today about your new book, How to Do Kaizen. So I was wondering if you can tell, tell me, tell the listeners and viewers more about your new book. Thank you for asking. Yeah, what I wanted to do, you know, for the last 10 years or so, I've been very excited about the people side of Lean. Um, and I wrote a book, my first book, The Idea Generator, about 10 years ago. And then I decided to go out and learn how to teach the concepts. And I remember the first time I taught it in Portland, I had 24 students in the room. And I was so bad that four people asked for their money back. But I was really determined to learn how to teach it. And my goal was, and still is, to be the best in the world, teaching this concept that I call quick and easy Kaizen. Because it is marvelous. To me, it's marvelous. I mean, I go work with a company like Gulfstream, and they started off having one idea every two years for the average em- from the average employee and they got 40 ideas per employee last year that's 40,000 ideas in their Mexicali plant and now all of their plants throughout the world uh, have quick and, quick and easy Kaizen programs so I'm excited about it and everybody I work with has that kind of a track record once they understand how to break through the resistance and that resistance unfortunately, is mostly manager's resistance to change. A manager should lead change, but unfortunately, they're, like everyone else, afraid of change. Okay, so I've been teaching this, been very excited about it, and then since I'm getting a little bit mature, (laughs) a little bit on age, I don't know how many years left, I want to put down everything that I do and really share it with other people that they could pick up the book And now, I know just picking up a book is not that easy to apply. That's true. But if you pick up the book with study groups, you get five people, six people together, you read a chapter at a time, and then you just say to each other, how do we apply it here in the company? And then you've got five and six people to push each other to do this. Then there's a possibility. So I tried to put in the book everything that I do when I teach everything that I do when I keynote conferences. I've been very fortunate to keynote, I don't know, in the last few years, maybe 50 conferences without exaggeration. I, I was on a, on a plane almost every week going somewhere. In fact, next week I'm going back to Orlando yeah. and I'm going to keynote a Six Sigma conference. So that was the reason I wrote the book, is to share everything that I know about the subject with the real hope, Mark, that people will understand the power of this. You know, I like to tell the story of the Baptist Healthcare Center, which is in your field, and how they were the lowest rated hospital system in all of the state of Florida. And then they installed an idea system, a suggestion system, yeah. or what I call quick and easy Kaizen. And quickly, they rose from the worst hospital system to the best and won the Baldrige Prize. Now, I'm sure they did other things, but the catalyst behind it was getting every employee involved in continuous improvement. Right. You know, Mark, we talk about continuous improvement. We go out and run a Kaizen Blitz, so we do a Six Sigma event, and they're wonderful. But they don't cause everybody to be involved on a continuous basis. Right. When you come out, I hope you, you visit with me auto leave. Mm-hmm. The visit is on Friday. This I'm is the week of the Shingo Friday. Conference. At the Shingo Conference. Right. In May? May. Yep, end of May. Yeah, in the, at the end of May. And uh, Auto Leave received 63 ideas per employee last year. 63. This year, their goal, believe it or not, is 96 improvement ideas per employee. <laughs> Nine, 96 ideas. That's, that's 96 in improvement ideas. Right. They do a system much different than I've been teaching. I've been teaching fundamentally that to break the mold of the old suggestion system 
was instead of having the person come up with an idea, having somebody else implement it, when you come up with an idea, you identify a problem, you, the worker, are responsible for implementing your own idea. You do it. Yeah. Yes, sometimes you need help, but that's only in a very small percentage of the time you need somebody's help to implement because I'm, I'm encouraging people to look for very small little things to do, not the big things. Okay. Autoleave has a different approach, and it's dynamite too. Autoleave has hired a group of specialists. They might have, not sure what the count is, maybe 30 of them. And these specialists' full-time job is to implement the ideas that come from the workers. Now, this is a radically different approach, but for them it's gangbusters. The only thing that I think that I'm telling them that they should shift on because I like the worker growing from their own idea. I like the worker building their own skills and capabilities from their own idea. So when these workers come up with ideas and somebody else implements it, they're learning how to identify problems, but they're not building their skills from their own ideas. Mm -hmm. So I have the privilege of working with Bungie Tozawa, my co-author, and uh, Bungie is the um, president of the HR Association in Japan. He's written over 20 books on the subject. He's the prime teacher in the Far East. And he gave me this privilege to co-author this book with him. And included in the book, I have over 100 examples, pictures and various Kaizen examples that people can look at. And then, of course, if they can break the resistance and just get started, and it's easy to get started. I mean, I wrote a book with Chuck York called All You Gotta Do Is Ask, and that's it. All you do is ask people for two ideas or one idea per week just to look around their work area and let them do it. Right. The big thing to recognize is that every idea is a good idea. That's hard. Because most managers look at an idea and then they begin to criticize and you criticize and you kill the system. And they have to look with new idea, with a new, with a new framework, that every idea is wonderful. I give the example. One worker says, I want to blow up the plant. <laughs> now, they bring, they submit that worker to the super, because this is the system. You come up with an idea, you identify a problem, you come up with an idea. And then you go to supervisor. We're not saying people can implement ideas without any checks and balances. Yeah. So they go to the supervisor. The supervisor looks at this and it says, I want to blow up the plant. Now, what's the, what's the supervisor going to do? Call the police. <laughs> well, the police. It reminds me when I taught, I taught a, a company called Jefferson. Jefferson is a division of Boeing. They make the maps for the pilots in the world. And they're... Uh, the first person that came up with the first idea went to their supervisor and sh walks out of the room and they talk to an associate of theirs and they say, you know, I just spoke to my supervisor and she said to me that, that my idea is not exactly what they're looking for. So she turned to her friend and she said, you know, I'm never going to submit an idea again. Because it's very easy to kill, to, it's like a baby or a little plant, you know, it's very easy to kill it. Yeah. To nurture it is what you want to do and to get started, you might get a lot of crazy ideas and that's okay. Yeah. But you just that's say to the person, that's a wonderful idea. And in this instant, you want to blow up the plant, you don't even say why. You just say to the person, let's look at the problem together. And you go out and look at the problem and the work is going to show you something that maybe stinks. You know what I mean? Something really bad in the plant. Right. They don't know what to do to get rid of it. And the role of the supervisor or the manager is to look at it and respect the worker that it's a real problem for them. Yeah. So I'm going to have to uh, stop you for time, but we'll start our next podcast with further discussion of that blow up the plant idea. We'll make okay. people come back and watch the next one. So thanks again, Norman. Thank you very much, Mark, for having me.